Welcome to Schwab Coaching for our Trader Talk in today's market segment. I am your host, Kevin Horner. Today, I am joined by my friend and Schwab coach, Mr. Cameron May. Hey, Cam, it's happy uh, Tuesday to you, sir. Hope your holidays setting up nicely. How are you? Well, I'm fantastic. Uh, yeah, the holidays are setting up nicely. I've got to say, uh, here we are on the 19th of December. And for those bullish traders who are thinking November was fantastic and we'll never see another one of those again, uh, December <laughs> apparently decided to say, hold my drink. Let's see. Yeah. So a uh, lot to talk about today. Looking forward to it, Kevin. You're right, Cam. Uh, we always have plenty to get to, but the market certainly has been uh, optimistic and it sure feels like uh, Santa is bringing a nice year end to things for us all. So we'll look at that with you, everybody, today. Let's just mention we have Connie Hill in the chat with us today, everybody. Thank you, Connie, for being here and managing the discussion there. Of course, as always, we'd love your follow on X, everybody. Please do so. Those are noted at the bottom of our screen at Kevin Horner CS at Cameron May CS at Connie Hill CS. Thank you for doing so, everybody. Uh, and one other note before we get on, uh, down to our business, we want to remind you about the 2024 market outlook coming today. Uh, that is this afternoon. So hit the calendar on that. You're going to be hearing from Schwab's analysts on the Schwab Center for Financial Research side of things. It's a great setup to your upcoming year. Great way to get positioned as you're starting to think about 2024. So make sure that's on your calendar. Again, that's at this afternoon uh, on the uh, Schwab Coaching Channel. So with that, uh, Cam, let's talk about some important disclosures briefly. We won't, uh, we will not uh, delay much longer, but just remind you all that our conversation is exclusively informational and educational. We do not make recommendations. We do, however, work through example ideas, example portfolio, example trades. We want you to consider technical analysis complementary in nature to your fundamental research. Uh, beyond that, Cam, let's get to it. Let's talk about what's happening with that SPX. Cam, I got to ask, are we getting a little far away from that orange 20-day moving average? My goodness, uh, are we pushing? Yeah, yeah. We're going to see this as a theme, I think, as we look at the other major indices. Stocks have just been shooting up, rocketing up, uh, and that's great, creating that separation above that 20 period, just illustrating how, how rapid the, the ascent has been. We've broken that 4,600 um, resistance that may be some technicians that we're monitoring. And the S&P is now challenging. It's, it'll be interesting to see if it can get up above uh, all-time highs. Those are not too far overhead. So that might be the next obstacle. But mm -hmm. yeah, it seems like a kind of a runaway train for the last uh, couple of months, Kevin. It really does. Uh, in fact, I think I've got a weekly on here. There it is. So this yep. is, um, yeah, there's our all-time high. Intra-week mm -hmm. period there, 48.18, presents as an area for many traders, at least as a target zone. If a trader cam were thinking about selling into strength, that might mm -hmm. be an area to look at here. It's about 70 points might away. Be. Yeah, yeah. If somebody's just trying to get out at or near price ceilings, well, there's a prominent one. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't just blast straight on through and continue into 2024 going higher and higher and higher. But yeah, um, I think for some, they might be feeling like, ah, the air's getting a little bit thin, Kevin. Okay. That may be a concern for some, for some bulls as they get up to that uh, resistance. You know, you're absolutely right. As traders, of course, we're always looking for proper setups or at least setups that make us feel confident and comfortable. And for many of us, Cam, that employs a proper risk versus reward at, uh, viewpoint mm -hmm. as well, meaning that uh, the point at which I, did, I admit I was wrong about being in the trade is – you know, a level below the current price action that I can sustain as it relates to my opportunity for profit. So just as an example, if I was targeting 48.18 to the upside, looking for maybe 70 points on the SPX, for a lot of traders, they'd like to limit their downside risk in the neighborhood of, say, 20 to 25 points. That would put them in about a one to three opportunity for risk versus reward. The unfortunate aspect here, Cam, is that if you look at that 20-day and you like it yeah. as support, as some intermediate-term traders do, Cam, that's 140 points or 136 yep. points away. That's a little bit more risk than what many traders are looking for. Yeah, and even if we're looking for a horizontal area of support, what, what are we looking for? All the way down to 4,600? That's even yeah. a little bit further below the, uh, exactly. than, the, uh, than the 20. 
So it leaves us, if nothing else, with maybe, like you said, thin air at the top. Uh, we may we possibly bust through and create more upside, we sure. Might. But you know, again, I think it's important to remind ourselves as traders: if we're going to do that, traders probably want to see those highs come into play first, because of course that enables them to use a tighter stop methodology or a tighter stop as and or exit strategy uh, on a breakdown in the current trend. So. You know, that's a concept that's a little difficult for a lot of traders who are kind of getting started in this process because the idea of paying more for something that you think is going higher doesn't always make sense to a novice trader, does it? Yeah, not always. And so if they if uh, if they're trying to let's say we're trying to look forward, maybe maybe that trader is in the position where they're uh, thinking it might be time to hit the pause button. Well, how long do we remain on pause in this very persistently bullish market? Mm -hmm. well, if we're just waiting for a bit of a pullback, uh, what some might do is look at a recent um, uh, run up in price and and uh, maybe we recruit a Fibonacci or just mm -hmm. say, well, when we have an advance, it's quite common to see a one third to one half retracement. So if we're looking at the most recent um, explosive move by the S&P 500, that's taking us from about, I would say about 4550 back okay, when, it was, so when it was close to in contact. Uh, a little bit high right there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yep, yep. Breaking resistance, um, close to the 20 period. That was the last time it was in in that same area, and then mm -hmm. we exploded upward. Well, when when a market or a stock runs up, for some technicians, they look for some specific proportions once the selling begins, and that is typically about one third to a one half retracement. Doesn't always do that. Sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. retrace at all. Other times it reverses course completely. But uh, but yeah, in this case, um, it might be looking, a, a trader might be looking, for example, on a 50% on a retracement around 46, 43 ish, mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also interesting, Cam, that they would look at that possibly because it we still got to allow the passage of time into the future to allow yep. the 20-day moving average to keep doing exactly. what it's doing, which is yep. rising with each new closing price uh -huh. we get uh, that remains above the 20-day. So as we go forward, if we went forward five days, Cam, the expectation would be to see, assuming and not a massive move to the downside, of course, that the 20-day moving average would continue on its trajectory and eventually get into that 50% level there right around 46.13, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, that 20 is going to be playing catch up while yes. that trader might be waiting for that retracement. And so that might just add a second level of confirmation of, of the of the anticipated support. Now, again, okay. it doesn't mean that that's where price is headed. Right, Kevin? Right. It's entirely possible that those traders deciding to wait on a pullback, they don't get that event. And then they're just left standing on the curb while the other bulls are participating in the in a continuation of a bullish market environment. So there are pros and cons to each trading decision. It's always up to the individual investor to make that decision. Yeah, I, I hope that's the takeaway that most of you have is that uh, this is n there's no guarantee in the market as we know. Um, there are many a trader that are still going to try and, and buy the market here in the hopes that the, the momentum continues and that can still work. Um, but it, it might also be notable, Cam, that as we continue to climb, I'm just noting the average true range of our moves gets tighter and tighter. Uh, that's yeah. not a negative either necessarily. It's just that the the volatility of move isn't there. Uh, we see that, I mean, I think we saw the VIX make an ultimate low, uh, like a new 52-week low this week already. Um, mm -hmm. So volatility is really exiting the market a little bit here further. And uh, we could continue just to see light volume allowing the market to push higher. Um, we don't want to fight against it. I think that makes sense for a lot of traders who have been participating. Look, we've been above even the 10-day moving average since November 1 for all but one single close. So for a lot of traders, Cameron, that trend suggests that the upside has been there and can continue to be there until something changes to that extent. So you're looking at nearly seven full weeks above a 10-day moving average. Yeah. That might feel a little long, but by the same token, Cam, the trend is the trend until it's not. Yep. Yeah. And that's, you know, that might be the decision that a technical trader needs to make. Well, do I mm -hmm. embrace this trend and go with being bullish, maybe scale into new positions? Or mm -hmm. do I wait for for what feels like an overdue retracement, 
may be opening a new window, a window of better reward to risk opportunities, um, at least in that in that trader's view. That's that might be the decision when the markets are just this bullish, right? It's hard, isn't it? Because yep. you hear that voice in your head saying things like, man, you're missing out, you're missing out. But let's remind ourselves what that voice is. That's that. That's the fear of missing out. We don't need to listen to that voice. For a lot of traders, that voice is a red flag. And if they can ignore that voice, <laughs> set it to the sideline or mute it, right? That's a positive. If you can eliminate that uh, type of, you know, that, just that that's the devil on your shoulder, isn't it, Cam? Really? I mean, that's what that is. It's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, there are pros and cons, so we've got to see both sides. <laughs> it's true. All right. Yeah. So quick peek at our NASDAQ 100. Look, more of the same. What are we going to say here? Uh, we did yeah. have a, uh, a bit of a consolidation, went sideways for about three weeks, and then that busted out. Um, this is just looking the same, isn't it? Highs, oh, perhaps overbought, yeah. but, you know, look. Overbought can stay overbought a lot longer than it we can. Think. It can, yeah. Yeah, so it really is. Yeah, I don't want to revisit the same territory too much here, Kevin. Very, very similar to what we just saw in the S&P 500. Yeah, and if I just threw up the uh, weekly here real quick, we'll just point out that we are at new highs on the NDX. Um, yeah. So this is, that's not a negative, Cam. New highs are not bearish. Right. No, the, uh, it, you know, we don't need to go to the chart, but the composite's significantly different. It's breaking above recent highs, but still well below all time lows or well, all, all, well below all time highs. But right. NDX, yeah, getting looking like it's pointing toward that that uh, all time high weekly close. It's only Tuesday. We'll see if we can hold on to current position. Mm -hmm. If we do, though, we, we would be setting a record. Cam, would that feel a little different if um, that candle flipped red and by the end of the week we were working yes, our way yep. down yes, uh, last week's candle? Yeah, that's why that's why I phrased that uh, statement the way I did. <laughs> if it's a huge if, it's only Tuesday morning. Can we hold mm -hmm. on to to uh, a green candle for this week? If we can't, that could change some longer term investor sentiment regarding NDX. I think relatively quickly at least mm -hmm. for some technicians. Certainly a good reminder about how to think about the weekly chart on a Tuesday yep. morning when we've got a yeah, full yeah. day ahead of us and, and two more, three more days of, of market yep. movement coming. Yep. Um, it, it's one thing to get a little bit ahead of ourselves on a daily chart, which does happen from time to time. I mean, how many times have you thought you had a breakout working on the daily chart uh, mm -hmm. in the morning only to see it flip red in the afternoon? That happens from time to time. So the same can be said yep. about weekly charts as well. Uh, let's peek in on our Russell. That's really been the star of this rally, Cam. Fastest 52-week yeah. moves we have ever seen in the rut. We moved from the 52-week low to a 52-week high in seven weeks. Yeah, yeah. Really strong move, but um, what, what might be causing some hesitation, and I'm glad you just zoomed out on that chart, is that we, we really are right at those channel highs. This is going to be yeah. interesting. If the rut can break out, that may be a new technical development in the eyes of uh, a number of traders. And maybe that could lead to continued enthusiasm in other indices. Now, obviously, we don't know that yet. We're still sitting right at those resistance levels. But that was something that caught my eye this morning. And I think I'm probably not the only one, Kevin, based on what I'm seeing on your chart as well, <laughs> uh, that's keeping an eye on this resistance. Yeah, uh, I think it's a probably a pretty common view at this moment. It hasn't exactly been um, uh, hiding itself, has it? I mean, we've been All looking right. at this for quite a while. Um, the, the question becomes, at what point is this different? And to this point, it really hasn't been a whole lot different than our previous moves into the zone here at resistance around 2000 yeah. on the RUT, except for today's action. You know, today, right now, as we push into or over 2000, we're at 2010 uh, on the rut here. And really what we're looking for is can we get a close over that zone? Um, you know, each time it's been really short lived. So the mm -hmm. fact that we're we're getting a bounce after the one day pause is a little interesting. But I think a lot of traders are just waiting for the close through that ledge mm -hmm. around yep. 2010 to 2015, wanting some confirmation based on the closing basis. Yep, makes sense. Yep.
Okay. All right. More of the same there. How about our uh, yield move? So the I was mm. kind of expecting a bit of a bounce just based on the technicals here. Look, we we got away from the twenty day after after a. a bit of a paw, uh, pull down here in the last week coincident with the rally we've seen in the broad market but we're not getting it i had a bear flag drawn in it was looking at it and we're close to violating that like almost like yeah. we could see rates going further lower cam yeah that's what this chart looks like it look uh, you know it's it just seems that um, the market appears to be pricing in some significant uh, reductions in that fed uh, target rate mm -hmm. in 2024 uh, just reflected here. Um, yeah, I see that flag, that bear flag that you're drawing now. Not much of a bounce against that. This is more of a, no. a bearish example of a, of, of a flat rather than a flag. Rather, sure. than, rather than a recovery in yields, we've just seen a consolidation in yields. And if we break that to the downside, it might project maybe another, uh, maybe another um, three point move to the downside. We'll see. My goodness, that would be, I mean, a, a continued lift to this market, um, yeah. which continues to expect cuts, uh, rate cuts coming in the very near future. I think we saw the CME yeah. Fed tool showing a high likelihood of cuts, at least as traders are positioning. And we should probably remind everybody about that. The CME Fed tool is not a foregone conclusion, but what right. it is is a measure of how traders are positioning for those events. And position right now is suggesting a cut coming in the March window. Yep, yep, that's just what I was seeing, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are seeing a lot of the same stuff. Uh, okay, now beyond that, Cam, the only other thing that I thought we should touch on here was the move in oil, which seemed to get a little bit yeah. of a rejection uh, yesterday. I say that because we had that tail once we got into the 20-day moving average. Mm -hmm. But really, the, the, I think the trend that many traders are eyeballing is this downward sloping channel that we've been yeah. incapable of busting out of to this point. Yep. So, we're, so you know, some might say, hey, we're closing above that 20. That's got to count for something. And it might. Right. But yes, it still seems to be contained. The price action still seems to be contained within that downward channel. So for some, they may be looking for something more definitive, a break of that channel resistance. Mm -hmm. And that, that might be a sign that the oil prices are finally set to technically move significantly higher. But again, even that's not a guarantee, of course. Right. No, of course not. No, no. But, but overall, yep, we've seen a uh, nice retracement in uh, in oil prices for those that were waiting for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a nice little bounce there, at least a, mm -hmm. kind of a flush move about a week ago with an open low that got a rally spot. Um, the energy space has used it as a reason for mm -hmm. the rally. Uh, yep. The interesting thing on this chart, I think, is the fact that uh, if you look at it as such, I drew it in as maybe a triple top up here. And yeah. at the level right now, the white line is the neckline of that triple top. And mm. that represents for many traders an area of resistance. It's a little intriguing to me that energy's rally in the last week took a pause right at that same spot. Yep. Previous price floor acting as a new price ceiling. And if you look at the last two candles, I mean, again, it's still early in the trading session, but we have a, a bit of what's called a bearish harami coming off that rally that we've had over the last week so it looks like uh like we might be um set to bounce against that price ceiling mm -hmm. again time will tell but i i would agree with that uh that technical outlook old price floor new price ceiling old resistance new support all right so that's some classical technical analysis stuff yep. huh? Level 101 right there. Um, yep. Cam, why don't we use this as a jumping off point? You told me this morning okay. we were looking uh, at an interesting chart, even in this particular space. Should we hit up ExxonMobil? Let's do that. Yeah, ExxonMobil, um, you know, for some traders that are looking for, and, and just to set the stage here, Kevin, uh, let's look at things from a bullish perspective. Uh, for traders who use charts in the planning of positions. And some might look for stocks that have just been going up and up and up, and they're trying to embrace that continuation sure. of bullish momentum. Others might be looking for something that's maybe fallen a little bit out of favor, maybe pushed down to lows, and they're looking for reasons why it might be reversing from bearish to bullish. And on an XOM chart, XOM has been trading in a price channel now for, what, 18 months, something like that. 
and we're trading That's right true. down near the lows of that channel, right around 98 bucks is where I was looking at, at a potential support level. So yep. for a technical trader, for looking for reversal, maybe they're trying to get out of what they perceive as the thin air of these uh, stocks that have just been going up and up and up. Uh, this sort of a, of a chart, and this one's just intended as an, as an example of the sorts of things that those sorts of traders might be looking for. That might be an example of, uh, of, of a potential bullish reversal from, from recent bearish sentiment. Uh, we've had a number of touches here at that 98 level over the course of the last couple of years. And, um, and for those traders who took positions down in these levels, they're, you know, depending on how they structured positions, there could be a favorable reward to risk scenario, especially if we are able to get back up to high ceilings around that 120 range. Yeah, that, uh, and, and so ultimately what you're suggesting is a trader who takes the viewpoint that this yep. is in fact a range as opposed yep. to uh, in a short-term uptrend, for example, might like the opportunity simply because under 98, they feel like they could move on from the trade, say, yeah. oh, I was wrong about the timing. It looks like more negative or bearish than it does bullish. But if it were to continue higher from here and your risk is down to 97, let's say, that gives you risk in the ballpark of five points. But if you think it's going back to challenge the highs we've seen in this range at 120, well, you're looking mm -hmm. at potential for 18 to the upside and only five mm -hmm. to the downside. So that sure yep. fits in our one to three ratio or better. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So for those that are using that reward to risk ratio, it doesn't always have to be th uh, three to one reward to right. risk, right? For some, they may be perfectly satisfied to one to one, depending mm -hmm. on, they, on what they consider to be the probabilities of the trade. Um, but yeah, this one setting up with a potential three plus to one reward to risk, again, depending also upon where the, the trader plans an exit. Yeah. And further, that trader can also kind of massage the trade a little bit by, you know, scaling in and scaling out. So instead of admitting, mm -hmm. okay, I want the whole position, I'm a hundred share buyer, I want to own a hundred here, uh, they might start small. And they might do sure. so, Cam, based on something as simple as the fact that we've now traded above the 20 day moving average. So this mm -hmm. is a little bit interesting as a near term signal yeah. for a potential reversal in something that has struggled. Yeah, and you can see this This is a stock that really hasn't traded above that 20 period in months. It's just been, mm -hmm. been uh, pushed down consistently and it's taken us back down to those lows. So to a technical trader who's looking for something different to signal act, uh, an actionable moment, uh, this right. could be it. Yeah, so they might start small, and this might actually be an excellent opportunity for us as an example trade. Maybe we okay. put a pin in this one uh, and come back to it because as example trades work, I mean, this this certainly offers uh, an interesting setup for many traders, um, certainly uh, opportunity to consider. And we've got a little bit of cash to put to work in our example portfolio. So I'm just gonna make note of it. Okay, and we'll come back when we are uh, looking through examples here in our portfolio, which needs some adjustments as well. Um, you also had another one in a different space, I thought, uh, that you might want to look might want to look at this morning too. Yeah, we have another one that's similar, PG. Okay. It's also bouncing off of parent channel lows. So a similar technical approach to XOM. It's nice to get some repetition with with similar but not identical scenarios. Sure. Let me put up the 200 on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have been kind of sideways a bit, haven't we? Well, actually a little bit more slope to this move. A little bit of slope. Yeah. So in this case, what we may have, depending on how we look at it, might be a longer term um, symmetrical triangle. Yeah. So we can trade uh, potentially within that triangle or a trader might wait for a breakout of the triangle. But uh, but yeah, there we go. Those are those are some potentially important uh, turning points for this trade. In any case, uh, it looks like we've recently come down to a channel low, whether we're looking at a horizontal level or an ascending level. We've bounced off that, mm -hmm. starting to move higher. So Boy. even even moving up to the top side of that triangle looks like it, it might be setting up. And this is just eyeballing things. 
uh, better better than one to one, potentially two to one reward to risk. Going mm-hmm. up to the uh, to the horizontal levels up around one fifty eight, that looks like that would certainly be three to one plus. That does, and and yet a trader could still eye that uh, down small downtrend line that's kind mm-hmm. of working, um, yep. you know, off the peak in August. I, I do think it's notable that we got into this same area. Look at all these. So first of all, lots of tails here in the early October. So that tells yeah. us that is a very important level for many traders who want to be on the long side because generally speaking when we get those tails it implies for the trader that that's where the action is that's where bulls are quite literally mounting their stand right yeah what what those might represent to some is is they see those tails as a failed effort by sellers to drive prices lower and that's only on on an, on an intraday basis but it happened one, two, three times over the course of a week, and it might uh, might represent a potentially significant area of reversal of sentiment even within a single day, and it act, might actually actually act as a confirmation of what some might be eyeballing as previous levels of support. And we see a pretty good example of that late in May, where prices have gotten down to the same range, and maybe yep. some of those traders who were thinking about getting bearish at that time uh, they think wait a minute if i get out of positions at this moment look what happened the last time yep yeah it's yeah. a great point yep. um so yeah we've i think a lot of traders would say support has been tested and held to this point some bullish traders might say you know what the last time we were in that zone we got really oversold on that rsi now we got into mm-hmm. that zone and our rsi was improving which might mm-hmm. imply for the bull that the sell down wasn't as aggressive as it might seem uh, and it might give reason to maybe start that initial position uh, and again mm-hmm. if you're a trader who likes to work through that process uh, adding to a position that's working in your favor instead of going so to speak whole hog into the trade starting small and then adding they might just start small see what comes look to add perhaps if you take out the recent high over 148 mm-hmm. and a half 149 and then another one again the last high up there around 153 which would imply more opportunity to get to that 158. Remember, it's always a stair step on the way up, Cam, quite frequently, a little bit more like the elevator to the downside. Um, But uh, the upside seems to take just a little bit more time. Sure, yep, I'm I'm glad for the example. And I also appreciate the levels that you chose, Kevin. Uh, They made good sense to me. So I think that's a good example. Okay, excellent. Uh, Let's see where we are on time. Okay, not a lot of questions in the queue, which is good because that tells me that you and I and our bands are going (laughs) back and forth is at least giving giving everybody something to keep an eye on. Um, We do want to hit up our example portfolio uh, for yeah. adjustments. Now, I had uh, Mike Urizzo on yesterday, and he and I went ahead and made some minor adjustments to a couple of positions, but that means there's some other positions that need adjusting as well. So we went and looked at Bank America and Union Pacific. We changed mm-hmm. one of those stops to a trailing stop. We raised the other one, uh, but we've got to look at, say, maybe Zscaler, Caterpillar, Dolby, uh, one of these stand out for you, Cam, is one to check on first. Well, let's just start at the top. Let's look at Zscaler. You got it. All right. So we'll go over to ZS. And, of course, I do have my orders on the screen. Boy, since we got that stop in, this thing has just continued yep. cruising higher. Um, are we at a spot where we need to be raising stops here, Cam? This has been super strong. It, it, well, it may be. I mean, we, we are looking at some decent profits building into this position. And, uh, and with this, the way that this has been rising so rapidly, when we have a horizontal level of support acting uh, as, a, as a stop placement technique, you can see we can get uh, quite some distance between price and the stop when we do that. So what do we do here, Kevin, when a stock has just been mm-hmm. blasting higher and there's not an, a, an obvious next level of support? Well, in this case, uh, some traders will turn to exactly what what you seem to have done in your discussion with Mike, and that is using something like a trail stop, where mm-hmm. we're not actually using, uh, you know, a, a a visual trigger on a chart, but instead using a dollar amount below the current price or a percentage amount below the current price um, as our stop level. Now, they'll now in doing that, 
what we're obviously doing is essentially dismissing what's happening technically or, or admitting that there's not a lot of evidence to operate on. Uh, so for some, it you know might cause them to get a little bit squeamish if they really like to lean on charts. This is not a this is not a charting technique. Aside from saying, well, the chart's not giving me anything, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. just use a, a trail stop. It's a difficult one to look at for a number of reasons because yeah, oh, it's great we're in profit, we love profits, but of yep. course, for a lot of traders, being in a profit scenario gives them stress because now they got to work to maintain the profit <laughs> and they need to employ those strategies. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at how this is working for us real quick. So we've yep. got. Um, a small position, but we're up 8%. So it's mm -hmm. working in our favor. We don't, I mean, 8% is getting to a level where some traders would just say, hey, I've made a great move. I should mm -hmm. take some profits at eight, eight and a half percent. Other traders might say, you know what? It's a strong looking trend and I want to stay with it. And I, I wouldn't blame a trader for either viewpoint, but I do want to yep. call out a couple of things that stand out to me. Number one, with the move higher, we've had incredible on balance volume moves. So this has continued higher aggressively. Volume is increasing as we move higher, Cam. That is another uh, validation of these highs. And so mm -hmm. the implication for some traders might be, hey, this is a move that has potential to continue. And if that's mm -hmm. the case, they might not want to exit unless the trend breaks. So how do we maybe use um, uh, a maybe perhaps a, an idea of selling on weakness in conjunction yep. with uh, maybe a, a, a trailing stop. Uh, the idea being simply let's try and keep the position as long as we can, if possible, and allow it to continue to run for us. Do you feel like the trailing stop makes sense given the nature of this move? Well, if you're if we're attempting to bring in um, some technical analysis to this, what, what what we might do is just look at maybe a shorter term moving average because this thing is just okay. moving quickly. So wouldn't surprise so me at all if it's using like a 10 period moving average exactly right as okay. a support. Yeah. All right. Now that might give a technical reason for uh, maintaining the position for as long as the momentum up appears to be holding as defined by that 10 period moving average. And you can see it's done a pretty good job. There was one departure through down through that moving average uh, back at the yeah. highest volume day. Yeah, right after earnings, yep. there appeared to be some volatility that caused it to uh, pierce that moving average, but that was very temporary. Recovered within hours and off it went again. So uh, that could be used as a surrogate for uh, you know something like a trail stop. We could also okay. use um, an ATR as a measurement to, to see if uh, we're giving this quote unquote enough space. Yeah, and, and this is where doing the math always helps a little bit, right? I think the thing that stands out to me in this example is if our exit strategy is currently at 190 and we're trading at 221, we're, we're really quite literally risking 30 points. Yeah. Um, so many traders are going to want to risk 30, yep. particularly when we've got profit. So if we were to raise this and at least reduce the risk associated with the trade, that mm -hmm. would do some good things for the trader. So some traders might just say, I'm going to raise my stop into the vicinity of the 10 period moving average. Some might say, well, let's let's finagle this a little bit. What do you say, Cam, if we used our ATR? which mm -hmm. is, oh, I got rid of the ATR. Sorry, everybody, let me add that back in. I keep moving around on my studies. So let's see, I've got, okay. The ATR today is 620. So if we just doubled it and said yep. 12, that yep. means in theory, we would need two pretty aggressive down days to get yep. taken out after putting on a trailing stop. Further, 12 points would mean a move through the 10 day moving average as yeah, well. well. So the nice thing here might be for an example basis, if we climb higher and continue to make new highs, we're gonna ratchet higher with it. Yep. But if we break down and give up only 12 points from our high, which does initialize the moment we set the trade on, uh, then we are likely to be breaking the 10 day moving average before we get taken out. That might give traders comfortable reasons to exit. It could be on weakness. Yeah, excellent. That's that is a that's exactly what I was pointing toward as a combination of these two uh, stop management techniques that might be applied in this sort of a scenario using a shorter term moving average with a stock that's just blasting higher, uh, checked against an ATR.
Like it. Okay. Yep. So let's keep it simple. I'm going to eliminate our existing stop by just canceling it there. We're going to put a sell on here. We have a position of 10 shares. I'm going to edit this trade. So just make sure I've got the proper shares in here, 10. And we are going to do a good tilt canceled trail stop. And our trail amount, we are going to make a big amount. Again, we're going to go $12. And so again, just as a reminder about a couple of key components that we traders need to know. Number one, even a trailing stop does not protect us against risk. We still have gap risk in these instances. So yep. remember that uh, the $12 ledge that we're talking about is 12 points beneath the highest high that uh, in this case, Zscaler makes once we are active. And if we fall 11 points from that high on a close and then open the following day, five, six, 10 points lower, that first trade will trigger us and will give us a market sell order thereafter, which means we're gonna be closer to exiting at a trade price we don't expect than one we did. So we need to know that that's a risk possibility. Doesn't mean it has to happen that way, of course, but it can. And while we traders rely on stop orders, they're just not guarantees or they're not perfect. So understand the risks involved, know what you're getting into, just a good reminder. So Cam, we'll go ahead and submit that. Um, good okay. till canceled, 12 points, confirm, send for my full 10. And there we are. So now we've got the ledge and notice everybody, it's just below the 10 day here. Yep. So pretty interesting spot for us, Cam. Yeah, very good. And uh, and I know that it feels, you know, you might look at that and say, boy, that's really close to that 10 day. Well, even if, if price started to pull back, that 10 day is still going to be running up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that'll naturally build in a little bit of distance between our stop, our current stop placement, where the 10 day is, if this gets triggered. Now, again, we could also just get a really strong move down very quickly and be uh, stopped out. But But this is just a technique that might be applied when a stock is just moving so rapidly. How can one react um, to a rapidly moving security, but in, in, in sort of a structured way? Great example, Kevin. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, it, it, look, structure's key, yeah, at least to the to trader who wants to do this over time, right? You just can't yep. go at it willy-nilly, unfortunately. Um, you do have to have a plan and a structure to your process. And I think that's what we want to illustrate in these particular shows. Good. Very good. All right. Next up, how about some Dolby Labs? Let's see, yeah, how, let's see. see how this one looks. Oops. All right. So Dolby, we'll add a little time here, get some uh, longer run moving averages in. So we've got to stop here at, um, you know, the mid range of this of this uh, level. I think when we put this one on, we did so um, expecting more than we've gotten. It's certainly given a bit back. But um, based on the chart, Cam, I don't think there's anything we need to do in terms of adjustments. Just as a That's reminder, right. one thing we don't like to do, we're not yep. fans of lowering or reducing our stock prices. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you said that, Kevin, because that was the point that I was gonna make. It can, um, it can be easy with the benefit of hindsight to reconsider the decisions that we made when we initiated a position and to say, you know what, I don't like where I placed my stop. I'm getting pretty close to that, it's making me itchy. How about we move that stop down? Now I feel a little bit better. I'm giving the stock more, the, obviously the logic there is, hey, that gives me more of an opportunity for, for this trade to succeed. Yep, but it's also at the cost of taking on additional unplanned risk. So yep. yeah, that uh, that is, I can't ever say whether one should never do something, right? But the, <laughs> the difficulty with, with uh, engaging in that sort of a behavior is where does it end? Exactly. Yeah. Well, so. I, appreci I appreciate the, um, the host in you coming through right here. I can't say always, and I can't say never, but yeah. I would lean into the discouragement <laughs> of reducing risk uh, or lowering, reducing your stop price. I think ultimately what we know is that if you spent the time building your trade, knowing your levels, and then building in a stop exit strategy, if you change or reduce that stop based on short-term market conditions, what you're saying is that all the work you did was for nothing. 
and it doesn't matter. And we know that's not the case. That's why you did the work the first yep. time. So don't don't change strategy uh, by adding risk down the road on a negative short term move. Let the trade play mm -hmm. out. And, it, and guess what? If it takes you out, it takes you out. If it gets back above where you have the stop in and suddenly things look better, well, then utilize that as a reason to maybe try once again, perhaps. But that doesn't necessarily mean um, that because you got taken out, you have to move on. Um, you know, there's always we talk about this stuff all yeah. the time and how difficult it is to manage these viewpoints. I think what a lot of traders do is just admit that the market doesn't know what you're up to. And it doesn't care what you're up to. It has no feelings <laughs> about what you're doing. So don't allow yourself to take those feelings and apply them to the market. Because the one thing we know about the market, there are no real emotions as it relates to the market. There are emotions as it relates to, well, us trading the market, yeah, obviously. The trader, that's right. The trader ourselves. Yeah, we'd be better suited if we could just take this robotic approach. That's for sure. Okay, um, so we'll make no changes on Dolby. Let's hit up our Visa position. We've got a 50 share position up a little bit, one and three quarter percent. Um, probably not a lot to do here just yet, Cam. We did move to a new high. We're seeing a little bit of back and fill in here, but there's mm -hmm. not a lot of reasons just yet um, from a risk standpoint to do much that would take us out of the trade here. What are your thoughts? Yeah, typically the trader might be looking for um, some clear higher lows, some other reason to think that uh, that support has moved higher and therefore we can move the stop up below that higher level of support. And I just don't mm -hmm. see a lot of evidence for that sort of a behavior just yet, Kevin. Yeah, I think if we did, it would be in the vicinity of you know this stuff here, but we're so close that yep. I wouldn't want us to get taken out only to find us bouncing here at the 249 ledge. So I think the fact that we've built that into our original process probably mm -hmm. continues to hold water in this example trade. Yep, yep, looks like it does to me. Okay, so we'll hold tight on Visa. What about our big boy here? We've got a big trade on CAT. So we built the Caterpillar trade based on risk tolerance uh, and our understanding that we could sustain as much as a $5 move to the downside on a 100 share position. But it's been moving for us, Cam, and we're into mm -hmm. an interesting spot. We yeah. do have this one bracketed. So we have exit strategy to the downside mm -hmm. with a standard stop, and we have exit strategy to the upside with a standard good till canceled limit order uh, way up here, which is great. But at this point, is there anything that we might consider as traders in the short term to capitalize on the move that's been made in the last week? You know, Kevin, I don't know where, if this is where you are headed, but there's one thing that, that uh, you just had your cursor positioned at previous highs. And I think a uh, trader maintaining or managing this position might be looking to see if we can close fairly definitively above that, maybe give it a couple of extra candles, a day or two above mm -hmm. that broken resistance that may provide uh, a technical um, reason to move our stop up. Now we could employ, you know, the same technique that we've used previously and bring in a, you know, this thing is moving so rapidly, use a, a short term moving average with an ATR measurement. Um, but that, that resistance is what kind of caught my eye on this chart. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So you were basically right where we're trading right now is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, see if see if we can push through that, maybe not taking immediate action, but keeping a close eye on things. Yeah, to me, that makes a lot of sense, especially for the short term trader. And I again, I understand the short term trader may be getting a little antsy because we're at an area that could in theory act as resistance here. We've been here a couple of times, we've been rejected, but it's notable to me, Cam, that the last time that we were at this level, it was in yep. the midst of our consolidation from yeah. which we broke down and now we've corrected that trend and we mm -hmm. are back at that same level. But what we're seeing here is remarkable strength, notably in terms of volume. And I bring this yeah. up because this is substantial. Look at the difference in volume here when we were going sideways compared to what's been going on since we got that flush out back at the end of October. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's pretty yeah. intriguing. Um, and I agree. I think it doesn't necessarily give us reason to raise the stop just yet, but it does give us reasons to position an if then statement, though, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And and, I, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we are moving this stop and moving it sub substantially next week. Yeah. 
that seems to be right on the uh, possibility for us. So yep. ultimately, if uh, the trader can give us, or if the stock can give us as traders, two closes over 290, we can start mm -hmm. looking at that. Um, and you yep. called it out. Uh, one of my favorites is the idea that we need two or three closes above a moving average to provide res uh, validation of a breakout. I say it's one of my favorites. Ultimately, it's a <laughs> process that many traders incorporate for confirming a breakout move, Cam, which I think is a big deal. If you need confirmation, a lot of traders lean into the idea that consecutive closes over a level will give you that confirmation. Very good. Yep. Okay, um, let's see. We touched on all but Disney. Let's hit Disney real fast, see if there's anything to do here. I don't imagine there is, but we'll check. So we've got our stop hmm. on there. We've got an improving action. Interesting, we broke the triangle, and now we are holding the 10-day for the last four days and getting a little bit of a bounce today. I don't think there's a whole lot to do here just yet, but as a uh, yeah. forward-looking statement, Cam, if we were to get above 96, do you think that becomes our opportunity to raise the stop? That looks like, yeah, it looks like the next area of potential, you know, broken resistance, new support, and that mm -hmm. might might cause a technically oriented trader to take some action at that point. But for right now, it looks like that stop down below the the most recent support. I think we yeah. just leave it. I think so, too. Uh, and many traders are probably apt to agree with that. Remember, a lot of traders like the idea of moving to new highs. Getting a new high gives you reason to raise that stop. Allow things to breathe, move to a new high, raise the stop to the last swing low once more. Always working to capitalize on upside moves and uh, trying to take advantage of them. Haven't quite gotten it yet, but we don't want to act early necessarily either. So that's a, a good reminder as well. All right, Cam, I'm gonna. We're right at the t the end here, so I wanted mm -hmm. to um, throw that Exxon trade back up here real fast as we wrap this up, because okay. I think we should uh, consider putting on an example position in Exxon with a stop under um, you know the 98 range as our protective measure. What are your thoughts? Yep, I think yeah, stop down there and maybe around the 97 level. Okay. Um, with uh, maybe even bracket it with target up at 120. I know that that uh, sure. that's some distance that it, it would have to travel, but um, the the reward to risk on that is three plus to one, mm -hmm. and we'll see if that uh, if that pans out. Well, let's do that. Let's do this with a buy custom with OCO bracket. We'll do a market purchase, but we will good till canceled our exit strategies. And we're going to tag that upper ledge at 120 as our limit price. So let's do that for there. And our downside stop at 90. Let's come under 97. Yeah, let's, so there we go. let's Maybe go to 96. like, you know, yeah, let's, let's just go flat 96. Cause then it, I mean, at 96, I think traders are going to feel a little bit more confident. We might very well be seeing a breakdown, but mm -hmm. again, bracketing this gives us a chance for what could be as much as about 18 to the upside and limiting our downside to six. So that's right in the one to three wheelhouse cam. And then yep. I'm just going to increase the position to 50 shares. Um, and 50 shares means we're risking about $300 in total for this trade. And we're only spending about half of our cash position. So let's go ahead and confirm and send. We'll just go with a standard full size trade though. Um, if we get up to that 120, we'll consider that an excellent opportunity and we'll look to take profits up there. That'd be good, good. for our examples. So uh, Cam, excellent discussion today. Thank you so much. I um, really enjoyed going back and forth with you as always. And it seems as though our viewers appreciated it as well. Hey, Tuesdays are always fun. I hope uh, everybody uh, comes back again to see to see us again next Tuesday. Heck yeah. We're, um, well, wait a minute. No, oh, we're not, not next Tuesday. Not, not next Tuesday. I had, to, I had to think about it a sec. We're going right. to be next right. Tuesday. That's In fact, true. let's just remind everybody about that, guys. Uh, just a heads up. Next week being the holiday, we will not be broadcasting on uh, the Trader Talks page here on YouTube. So just a heads up. That said, we have plenty to come for you the rest of the week. I did note for you this, uh, the special event today. Uh, that's at 2 p.m. Eastern today. Uh, hosted by our friend Joe Mazzola. We're going to be hearing from Lizanne Saunders, Joe, uh, Kathy Jones, 
and Jeffrey Kleintop. So a uh, fantastic thing for you to keep on your calendar today. Again, 2 p.m. Eastern ahead of that. We do, though, have uh, Ben Watson coming. We're going to be hearing from Barb Armstrong, and we're also going to have John McNichol. So make sure you're on the channel today, everybody. Uh, with that, I'll thank you all for participating. Uh, really appreciate Connie. Thank you so much, Connie, for managing the chat today. Make sure you're following us on X as well. We appreciate all of your engagement, everybody. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you all again soon.